Welcome back to the shop, Jason. Project Black Pearl back here behind me where we are on step three or video three or whatever you want to call it of our timing guide series. Today, what we're going to cover is we're going to cover the reinstallation of our Vanos distribution block, Vanos units, the rebuilding of our intake Vanos unit, our guides, our chains, and we'll see how far we get. Let me show you what we got going on here. So. I've been at this now for way too long because I'm only working on it a couple hours at a time and I'm trying to beat the summertime heat. It's 90 degrees here in the shop right now, which I mean, isn't so bad, but I've got multiple fans running. I've got a swamp cooler over here at the door, making it humid as all get up in here, but it's not 120 degrees like outside. Here in the engine, you can see we've got everything stripped down and cleaned. I've got a thread chase in my check valves here so I can show you how to replace those. Oh, and like you saw in the last video, this stupid ring nearly gave me a heart attack getting stuck in there. We've got all our old parts laid out and we're getting set up over here to replace our seals with our BZ and service kit and tool which I've never done before, so this ought to be interesting. All in all, this project is coming along nicely. I'm pretty happy with the progress, albeit it's taking a little while, but hopefully you're getting something out of it. So let's get right into replacing those seals. Oh, and if you're new around here, this little button here says subscribe. That's how you know to uh, get back to some of my other videos. Take a look at the merch and stuff that I have on my website, shirts, hats, things like that help support the channel, appreciate it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by cleaning our Vanos unit. That way we can mark it. I'm using my uh, favorite shop towels, links down below, obviously. Those Amazon links do help. You know, it's a little bit of money each month from people buying stuff there, but wow, is it a big difference in being able to buy some of these miscellaneous parts for these projects to keep this stuff going. And these wipes, man, they do a great job. The reason that we're cleaning the outside here is one, having it clean will make it easier to hold in our hands. And two, when you read the Bezian instructions, what they say is that these inner and outer pieces are balanced to one another. I don't know if that's the case or not. At BMW, we didn't replace these things, we, or we didn't repair, we always replaced. So that wouldn't have mattered in our repair instructions. Bezian says to do it, I'm gonna do it. So I'm getting it clean enough to be able to get some permanent marker on there. So hopefully that doesn't come off. Now we need to pull this guy out. Just double checking where it goes back in right there. Alrighty. If our washer gets stuck inside, we're gonna to need to pop that guy out. Try not to wipe your marks off. What we need to do is we need to get this inner race up and out of here. And this washer is a very tight fit. So if you pop that guy in there, you can use a pick now to slowly rotate that guy up and out, just like that. Okay, now our seals are down inside this groove. We're gonna use our Hook pick here, see if we can get to the Teflon seal first. Well, it will be first. So there's our seal. Can you see that? So now that it's up and out, I'll go back in with a 90 degree. Come over to this side. Oh yeah, pop. Just like that. Seal is pretty hard after all these years. Now we'll do the same thing to get our O-ring out of the inside. We're gonna try to get underneath it with a little hook. There it is. Now this guy is a bit thicker, so it's gonna be a little harder to get out of the small opening. And we're gonna be using the back side of our pick, the 90 degree try and squeeze this guy down in there. 
and then work it around. Careful not to use the pokey side. Technical definition, of course. All right, you can see the seal is bunching up on this side. What we have to do is we have to get the seal in the groove. It sits in a groove inside this housing here. So we're just going to go down. We're going to try to pull it up and push from the other side. Kind of like putting an inner tube in a bicycle. You got to get the tube up in the tire so that it doesn't get pinched. There we go, that's working better. There we go. Slowly, to be patient with this, you can pry up on the side here to get this gear back up. Okay. It's in, and it pinched just a little there at the end, but then it bloop, popped into the housing. You can use your pick to follow around the bottom here and make sure that it's all the way in. And you can also see it when you rotate a little bit at an angle. All right, now the scary part. Our Teflon seal, we don't want to damage this guy. So we're just gonna do the same thing. Slowly push her down. Make sure we lift it up so that it's sitting inside of the O-ring versus down below the O-ring. You can overshoot it. Oh wow, this is going no problem. Oh, that's why. It went too low on this side, so it just dropped right in when the shaft pushed down. Okay, we've got our seal pushed around into our little groove there, or our O-ring. Now we need to press down our piston. That's what the word is. With our seal in there, push your piston down and then we're just going to gently work it up against the o-ring to get our little fold out and you should be able to look in there and see that it's in the groove all the way around make sure that it didn't fall all the way to the bottom mine actually did that had to pull it out and fix that which took a little bit of time it was quite tough to get out of there we're going to line up our seal line here and this is going to be pretty tough to get in there I'm going to go ahead and throw some oil in here the instructions call for pressing it a little by hand and it's going to be really tight you can see my inner housing is moving that's not supposed to happen I've got to try to pop it back out you can grab the uh, opening inside there to get it out. We double check. Our ring looks good. We'll be moving on to the press next. Our washer is back in there. Now we have to let's see, get our base on our Vanos unit. And you can see it's got the three holes in here for our sensor inputs. That's these little pins that are sticking up. So you may have to bend the pins to get this guy on here. In my case, they're pretty close. And I've been able to just squeeze it right on there. Then you're gonna need a vise attached to something pretty heavy. My toolbox is a few thousand pounds with everything in it. It's got a lot of steel. I'm hoping that bolted to the top here is gonna be enough. We're going to crank this guy down. My awesome Harbor Freight press. Central Forge. Maybe it's Harbor Freight? I'm not sure now. We're going to put our top cap on. Then our bolt. We want to lubricate our threads with, they say graphite grease. I don't have any graphite, but I do have anises. And then depending on how your base goes over the sensor input, this bolt may or may not be straight and you have to apply a little torque to get it on there. Mine went on no problem. And then our first torque is gonna be 100 Newton meters. I'm gonna be using a half inch torque wrench for that. Or not 100 Newton meters, 100 foot pounds. It's 136 Newton meters, I think is what it says on their website. Okay, 100 foot pounds. This is a 27, which is the same as your crank bolt. 
that's a pretty sufficient amount of torque. Now we have to go one full rotation around. So I'm going to clean everything up. I'm going to put marks down through everything because after this, if we wind up checking with our feeler gauge and there's still a gap, we'll have to come back over here and put another quarter turn on it. And for this guy, I'm going to be using my three quarter inch breaker bar and my three quarter inch socket that I bought for taking the crank pulley off because when I was using my half inch socket um, and four feet of breaker bar, I was afraid that I was going to break the adapter I was using. So full three quarter, much better. Pick this guy up on Amazon, link in the description. Okay, now we got to go full turn without anything coming apart, breaking. Probably gonna have to put a breaker bar on here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there goes the vise. I have seen people use impact guns to do this successfully. I really don't think I want to use an impact gun on there. I don't feel like it could be good for the housing. I don't know. I'll just go old school. That's halfway right there. Close. Remember, you have to do this twice. <laughs> Ooh, there it is. All right, now we can loosen it. Dang. It's just as difficult to loosen. Now we're going to put the bolt back in. We use the vise one more time, and we're going to hit down until we come off of the housing. There it is. You can see it squeezes down over it quite a bit. Jeez, it's crimped all super duper tight. There's no chance we're getting a feeler gauge in there. Okay, there should be no gap at all. So your smallest feeler gauge, so that's gonna be six thousandths. There is in fact zero gap there. Now, before crimping this, I was able to rotate the plastic housing. In fact, I can rotate the plastic housing on my other Vanos unit. If I grab the pin, see how that spins? It'll spin around 360, independent of our piston. Yeah, that's not going anywhere now. That is squeezed down super duper tight. I can even see the crimp ring compared to this one. That's not going to go anywhere. The crimp ring, you can see the indentation right here where it was rolling it. That's pretty cool. Let's try to put our piston back in. Got our washer in there still. Okay. Then we can use our German Auto Solutions tool and it rotates. Nicely. All right. One Vanos unit rebuilt. Now let's put it on the car. As we begin reassembly, we need to go ahead and replace those one-way check valves. These are the oil check valves that go into the back of the Vanos distribution block to provide oil for our solenoids. After that, we're going to replace these rectoseal rings up top. These are the steel rings that go into our distribution block that I got stuck on originally. Once you get the little teeth apart, you can gently walk these across the cam and then lock them into place. The instructions do call for locking all three rings in line with one another at the top of the camshaft. Then go ahead and put your seal on the back and then oil everybody up before we slide our distribution block on. Make sure as you're installing this guy that the bottom bolt still has the sealing washer. There's an oil passage in there that you don't want oil blowing by out the bottom. Then we're going to torque it down to spec and move on to installing our upper 
secondary chain tensioners and torquing those guys down. I torque these guys down to about 15 newton meters, the same as our secondary chain tensioners. I then proceeded to get distracted by the valley pan, which I replaced in full, torquing this guy down in a crisscross pattern to 10 newton meters. We've got our timing gears on here, and we tightened our bolts down finger tight so that everything still moves. Before we attach anything to this front cover, it's important that we go ahead and blow out any oil or debris from all of these threaded openings, whether it be coolant or oil or you know, whatever. We really don't want anything getting trapped in any one of these openings that shouldn't be there or that might compromise our bolts staying in place. You see, I've got liquid coming out of pretty much every one of these. Before we can get our U-guide on, we have to put our cyclone separator, oil separator tube in. I'm gonna lube the bottom so it slips over our drain tube. And then up top here, I'm gonna lube the O-ring on the inside. That way when we install our breather line from the manifold through here later, it'll go in easier. And on the outside here, this is just a precision seal. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Hylomar on the outside just to try to keep any oil from escaping right there. The U-guide is what presses that guy into place. It doesn't say to do this anywhere in the instructions. So you can do this at your own insight. I just don't like areas that don't have any type of a sealant that lead to the outside. You know, your oil pump has no sealant on it, but it's inside of the pool of oil in the engine. So it doesn't exactly need any sealant. It's not gonna leak out of the engine. So that just sits in here flush, and then the grub screw will push on the backside of it. That's what happens. Now I know. Okay, U-guide. U-guide is set up over here. I've got my bolts, my grub screw installed already. These are E10s. It's been almost a month since I took this apart, so Everything's a little fuzzy at this point, and it's all been sitting out here in the dusty workshop, so I might have to blow everything off with some air. On the back side, we have two O-rings to lube up, one that actually goes down into the block here. This one sits up against the face of the block up here, and then on the bottom, this is where our oil tube feeds in to our other guide. We're gonna line that guy up down on the bottom. Got our O-ring up top here. Gently slide it in. Got the three on the bottom, two in the middle. They're all gonna be 14 newton meters. They are different size bolts though. Same heads, different size bolts. Okay, we wanna snug up the top first. So I'm not gonna go full torque, just snug. Then the bottom three. I'm working outside to inside here. Now I'll torque these up here. Now the grub screw, they recommend a little bit of blue Loctite on here before we tighten it down. And the torque spec on this is snug. We're just applying pressure to the backside of the oil separator so that it can't back out. And our little bit of lubricant slash sealant that we put on there will hopefully help to keep it from leaking at all. There it is right there. You see it applying pressure and bloop, just tight. Before I get too much stuff in the way, I'm gonna just drop my oil pump chain on just so that I can't get too many things on here in the way that for some reason I won't be able to get it on later since it does go back behind the primary timing chain. You can see our oil separator. We're on our tube, nice and firm. It's pushed up and into our opening here. That all looks good. We're gonna put our assembly lube on that O-ring on the inside. Okay, it's time for our primary chain. This big, beautiful lady here. Here we go. 
Gonna start over here on bank one. Slip it in. Go down and around. Want to make sure we get it on the crank here before we get up onto the cams. There we go. So now we can tighten these guys up to get tension on it. We're going to start everybody loose still. See how everything can move. That's going to help us. And while we're nice and loose, I'm going to drop some lube in there just for later. Thinking about our startup, I don't want any dry friction surfaces. So that lube is running down our guide on both sides here. Next up, we've got to get our stationary guide in. So we're going to start down on the bottom. We have to get over our clip, get the chain lined up, snapped into place. Make sure the chain is all the way engaged in the guide as we're sliding everything on here. Okay, locked into place. These are going to be 10 newton meters. I should have bought some Loctite gel. It sticks better. Okay, now we've got our primary chain guide here. This is our tensioner guide. On this guy, we have our oil feed tube here. I'm going to slide some lube on this guy. And our O-ring. You see right here where oil will feed this guide. And it has to fit right down in the bottom here. So we want to slide that in gently so you feel it go in. This bolt is going to be torqued to 22 newton meters. I didn't see anything about Loctite on this one, but what the hell, we're here. We'll just throw a little dab on there. Make sure our chain is wrapped around the crank. That would be pretty important at this point. Got this little torque wrench maxed out at 22. It only goes up to 25. And of course, like everything else, a little more lube on here. We'll get a zip tie up in place. See, I don't want the zip tie to be anywhere near those little plastic pieces of the guide. Basically pull this super duper tight. Squeeze that chain in. Lock down in place. We're going to be popping our secondary chain guide holders out as well. Okay, we're following our German Auto Solutions instructions here. Next up, we have to get our timing tool or timing tensioner. This guy. The tensioner adjuster tool in. These are, let's see, five millimeter Allens that come with this. And the instructions call for pulling on this guy as tight as you can to tighten your zip tie. My zip tie is already pretty darn tight. So you're gonna adjust your thumb wheel until it contacts. And then we're gonna go around two more revolutions and two revolutions. That sucker's nice and tight. We do need to get our tensioner holders out. So you can just push down on these guys, pull those out. And we're gonna need our adjuster tool since our next step is to actually set the Vanos units. Okay, this next part is a little bit weird, but it's the way that they do it. So what we need to do is we need to set both of the intake cam adjusters in their initial position, or so it's called. So what we're looking for is we're looking for continuity between the body and the camshaft, essentially, through these pins here on the outside. So first thing you want to do is set your multimeter to continuity test and check that it beeps. Mine's beeping. I'm missing an alligator clip somewhere, so I'm using one of these pin grabbers. You can go onto the block pretty much anywhere. And then we're going to be turning our Vanos drive counterclockwise. So you can see here it rotates. So we're going to go counterclockwise until we can get it to purge all the oil out. 
and we get a tone. There it is. Okay, hear the tone there? Next what we want to do is get our socket in there. We're going to apply pressure at the same time. And then we're just going to apply a little bit of tension holding this in place. Apologize for all the beepy. We'll put that over here. And then we'll do the same thing on our exhaust sprocket. We're just applying tension for now. All right, 110 newton meters. And we want to counter hold our camshaft versus letting the block do all the holding. How far are we getting? We're at 85, 96. This torque wrench is weird. It beeps on the way up to torque and then it does a double beep at full torque. There we go, 110. Now 125 on the bottom. That'll do. Okay, now what we want to do is get back there and double check our cam blocks are all flat. Nothing should have moved around here. Our crank is still in the same spot it was before, even without our oil pan on it. Basically just looking back here for any gaps. Like did we pull our blocks at all, move anything? Looks pretty solid. Okay. Moving on to next step. Okay, now we got to get our extra timing tools. These are going to be for our impulse wheels. So we can go ahead and put our impulse wheels on. Bank one and bank two over here. We used our new socket to pull the solenoids out. We need to put these guys in the solenoid spot. And then we're going to tighten these down and then back them off quarter turn. Now we have bank one through four. It's going to slide on like that. And it will only go on one way here. So you can see everybody lines up there with it on this side. This one's going to be over here on this side. You don't want to force these. If they don't want to go on, you did something wrong and slow down back up. These are going to be torqued to 40 newton meters. For this, we shouldn't need to counter hold the cam. Pretty light. Ooh, 48, that quick. Okay, and now we are timed. So this should slide off the front. This will rotate out. If you want to double check, you can slide everybody into place. And you can see here, it locks in very nicely. These are very high quality tools. Now I just need somebody else's car to do timing chains and guides on so that I can get my money's worth out of these tools. Hmm. Maybe uh, Jay, you, you want a 540 or something that we can do timing guides on? Yes. That would be cool, huh? This one might be for sale soon, yeah. Can you like do that Yeah. I'll give you the uh the sixteen year old discount. Well this seems like an appropriate spot to put an end to this video. We are timed up, everything is in place. I can't rotate the motor because I don't have the oil pan on and I want to be able to hit the timing pin before I pull the cam blocks and everything off. As you can see here, I've got one of my uh, DFB shirts from down below. You can see in my little shopping section. I have this shirt with the E39 M5 and without it, just in case you have a different project car that you know you promised to only buy one of. I now have two E39s. I'm trying to convince my 15 year old to buy an E39 as well. He's, he's pretty excited at that prospect. Maybe even this one and I can buy another M5 later. Anyhow, next video, we're going to finish wrapping this guy up and get everything situated. I appreciate you watching. If you have comments or questions, or maybe here in the Phoenix Valley, you have questions specifically about your car, feel free to reach out. I reach out and respond to all emails that you hit me up at. Again, thanks again for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, do those happy things. It really does help. If you buy anything from the Amazon links, 
No cost to you, does help me out just a little bit. Again, really appreciate you guys. We'll see you, well, right here in the next video.